This is the August 25th meeting of the WDIC committee. Um, welcome everyone. And why don't, we, um, why don't we do a quick introduction of each other. I'm Henry Grandison, I'm the chair of WDIC. I'm a legislature, legislator in the third district. Why don't we go next with um, Ann Corbin. Thanks, Henry. I'm Ann Corman, uh, county legislator. My district is County Ulysses, uh, northern part of Enfield and part of the town of Ithaca. And I'm the um, past chair of this committee. And I'll pass it on to Deanna. Um, good afternoon. My name is Deanna Crithers. I'm Chief Equity and Diversity Officer with Tonka County. And I'm a new member of this committee. And I will pass it on to Mia. Um, hi, everyone. I guess I'm a temporary guest for today. I'm an intern with the Ithaca Asian American Association, also known as IAAA. Um, so glad to see everyone today. And with that, I guess I'll pass it off to um, Ken. I am Ken Clark, director of the Tompkins County Office of Human Rights. Good to see everyone. Why don't you pass it on to Kate? I'll pass it on to Kate. <laughs> Thank, Thank you both. Um, I'm Kate Shanks, Booth, the director of Tompkins County Youth Services and a WDIC uh, board member. And I will pass it off to Shannon. Hi, I'm Shannon Danker, and I am a probation officer at Tompkins County Probation Department, but I am the chairperson for the Recognition and Appreciation Subcommittee of JEDI. And I will pass that on to Brittany. I am Brittany Greep. I am one of the deputy clerks at the legislature. I am a member of Team JEDI and I am the vice chair of the Recognition and Appreciation Subcommittee group. And I will pass it to Rachel. You haven't done your intro yet, have you? No, oh, hi, I'm Rachel Graham. I am vice chair of WDIC and an employee at the county clerk's office. And I will pass it to Rob, who is here. Rob, are you here? We're doing introductions. Maybe not. Okay, um, we'll get Rob a little later, I guess. Um, does anyone have, well, why don't we go to the, to the minutes, which are attached to your um, agendas, and I'm open to a, a motion to approve the minutes. I'll move the minutes. Okay, okay um, moved by Kate, seconded by Ann. Corman, any discussion? Okay, why don't we vote on the minutes. Everybody who approves the minutes, raise their hand. Okay, any That's denials? That's an eye for me being invisible. Okay, any, any, any denials? That passed unanimously. Um, and Rob, why don't you introduce yourself to the group just quickly? Uh, all right, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Rob Brown, a member of WDIC. I'm a, a community member from Lansing, also a, a CFO at Finger Lakes for Use. Thank you. Um, why don't we get started with, um, with Mia's presentation? I'll have Deanna introduce Mia and talk about the presentation that she's going to make. Sure. So we have a couple of distinguished guests here today. Um, and also just wanted to acknowledge we have Diana Crouch here as well. Um, she's an attendee. She's also a member of Team Jedi. We can't see her on the screen right now, but I want to acknowledge that she's here for that presentation as well. Um, and she, uh, she is a member of the health department. But to your question specifically, Henry, we have Mia Song here today. Mia, um, I met Mia last week and she did a tremendous um, presentation for us about allyship and then storytelling and how 
we can tell a story of diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. Um, and then as a part of uh, one of her internship, she's been going out and uh, providing these resources to, to folks. And I thought it was so compelling. One of the ways that I think WDIC is, is, is a partner to IAAA as well. And I uh, asked our chair here, and thank you, Henry, for your approval to have her come. And actually, Mia is so distinguished. Mia will be studying at Cambridge, I believe, the next semester. And so Mia will be here for one more week. And so Mia, we are proud to have you here. And we're grateful that you will spend your time. So I'll turn it over to you. So thank you for your time today. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Deanna. I'm really honored to be here today. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll start sharing my screen. Okay. Okay, um, all right, so, sorry, I just need to get the nerves out. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, I know all of you guys must be super busy, um, but so I'll make it nice and quick. My name is Mia Song, and I'm currently a senior at Cornell University, and I major in American Studies, and I minor in Inequality Studies and Asian American Studies. So today I'm here to talk to you all about allyship and what that looks like from my experience and more broadly the Asian American experience. Um, I'm interested in this topic and I've chosen to speak about this because I believe that the stories that I will tell you all today um, will hopefully broaden all of our perspectives on unique challenges faced by different groups of people um, in Tompkins County and in our broader society. Um, I know you may wonder why I'm here to talk to you today. Um, I have very limited experience in diversity, equity, inclusion, but this summer I've been working with the, the Asian American Association as a student intern, and I'm also interning with Pfizer Pharmaceuticals um, as a diversity, equity, and inclusion intern. So I'm sharing little tidbits about um, what I learned during then and also my lived experience. So Growing up, I was the younger sibling of two daughters born to two South Korean immigrants. Um, English was not my first language, and my dad was very insistent that we speak primarily Korean in the household to retain uh, cultural roots to our heritage. I went to public school in a small neighborhood called Sunnyside in Queens, New York City. Even though I learned how to speak English fluently, I was a timid child, and the lack of speech landed me in ESL or English as a second language program until my mom came in one day with her limited English proficiency or what people might call broken English um, to demand that I be removed from this program. 20 years later, I'm standing in front of all of you having my sister graduated from Cornell this past May as a first generation college student and I as an IAAA and Pfizer DEI intern. So today I'm not here to explain the concept of allyship or provide textbook definitions that has been drilled into our minds these past 18 months. I'm simply here to share my stories growing up as an Asian American female in broader American society. So as Deanna mentioned, I met her last week through a connection bridged by Connie Park, um, who works at um, the community college nearby. And my first interaction actually through planning the anti-Asian harassment and discrimination bystander training initiative um, this past April and May. Um, given the shooting in Georgia, I was really propelled to combine my passion for social justice, as well as my studies in American studies, inequality studies, and Asian American studies to see what I could do from a student standpoint. Um, while I was immersed in this passion for advocacy and social policy, um, of course, outside the Cornell bubble, um, fellow Asian Americans were being gunned down at their workplaces. And my dad was actually fighting a battle with his employer over health insurance. So during that spring, during this past semester, knowing that my mom, who's also a service worker, could have been a victim, racked me with fear throughout the course of the spring semester and even going into the summer. On the other hand, like I mentioned, my dad was contesting an unfair insurance plan change and it was one that lurked in the gray area of, intra, of legal and extra legal spaces. So to just give a quick overview, um, he has a 20 year tenure at his workplace and they decided to support only employees and their spouses and remove all dependents from the pre-existing family plan, forcing my dad to pay $1,000 extra per month to keep his children on. 
there was really no reason to do so other than the fact that they can make my dad's life more difficult. And so in this space, even though Kanye is not here, I want to thank her for her expertise and so for sharing that emotional and turbulent time with me. And as a college student, I'm more than privileged to be sheltered from the plights of the real world. And also because my parents go above and beyond to make sure we can live somewhat of a better life or even a footstep closer to what we call the American dream. But just four months prior, now five months, I was fearful for the safety of my family, my friends, my peers, and my colleagues. And I think many tears were shed from a place of vulnerability and also unity. I have very, very limited knowledge and experience of employment law benefits or any of those technicalities, but I remember waiting on the phone for 40 minutes to talk to an equal um, employment opportunity federal agent and also other individuals to try and figure out what I could do to help my dad and alleviate some of the burdens that he had to carry by himself. The accumulation of these events made me think about the structural policies and practices and even going as far as to think about how do we respond to situations. Um, more often than not, in my studies, my internships, my experiences, I find that from a structural standpoint, actions are more reactive than preventative. And so it made me think to what extent I, as a student, can work or strive to create some tangible or material thing to prevent people like my mom from being murdered at work or vic and vic victim blamed or to prevent employees like my dad from feeling hopeless, like he's the only one um, and to really help people who even have language barriers. And with that, I segue into my understanding and experience of the allyship journey. Um, I'm sure we've all seen variations of this in one form or another. And while I wish I could say I'm the most active pr practitioner of allyship, um, this summer, it really came to light just how difficult it is to stand up to people, and most ironically, the people we consider closest to us. Um, understanding allyship, how to be an ally, the challenge of practicing allyship aren't really as discussed. Um, they're not really personalized. And so I think when we sometimes look at these infographs or these pic pictures, we often, um, we're so used to it that we don't really give it too much thought. And the common presumption with allyship, based on my understanding, is that we stand up for strangers, to strangers, when in reality, I think allyship really means having to challenge our peers, our colleagues, our friends, and most importantly, our family members or relatives. Um, and I have to say, personally, it hurts beyond measure to hear things or witness things from the people that we thought we loved the most or considered to even be a part of us, the people who might've raised us, the people we grew up with. And with that, I wanna say that Tompkins County, more broadly Ithaca, to me is a home that I grew to love. Um, it's a home that fosters diversity, inclusion and belonging. And while I feel that popular rhetoric, academia, um, popular culture even has somewhat framed Asian Americans, as perpetual foreigners, these aliens, um, they have been a long part of American history. In fact, the first Chinese restaurant in Ithaca was established in 1931 by the Tang family. And so I wanna say that Ithaca is imbued with the histories and narratives of Asian Americans who've long, who've long been hidden in our archives. Um, these are people who own laundromats, restaurants, small businesses. And these are not the people that we commonly recognize as extraordinary, but they are the people who are a part of our everyday lives. And so I'm here today to present this story, my story, and share it with you all to engage in further discussion and really think about what can we do? What are the preventative, proactive reaction, um, actions that we can take rather than those that are reactive? And with that, I would like to conclude my brief presentation or, or perhaps what you would call storytelling today. And so I'd now like to thank you for your time and open the floor for questions, thoughts and opinions or further discussion. Yes, thank you for that, for that storytelling. Do we have any, any questions, any discussions or reactions to it? I'm 
first of all, Mia, thank you for coming. I'm proud of you um, and know you will do great things. But then also, as we talk about the work of WDIC, we um, recognize that uh, allyship is the work of all of us. And so there's never a time where that's what you shared won't be relevant to the work we do. And so um, I don't have any questions for you right now because I asked you a lot of questions last week, but at the same time, of uh, us as a committee, um, how do we take these things in um, as a whole more of a challenge to us? And how do we go to the next level? Thank you. I really appreciate your <clears throat> very forthright and moving way in which you spoke. And, um, and, I and also to the way in which you defined allyship as something that's not just simply extended to the people we are, seek to ally with, but that it's also the work that we do with those with whom we interact with outside of that sort of nexus between uh, the allied group and us. I mean, and I think that's, that is so important. That's, that is a, as integral as extending, you know, um, oneself or one's group to another. And I, but I, I really appreciate the, just the, just the, um, just powerful way in which you spoke to, to this as well as just telling your story. Narratives are so important to this work. Thank you, Bob Brown. Oh, Bob Brown. I, I, I just wanted to say within, you know, within the uh, context as a, a lot of us have uh, found that uh, uh, the heart and soul of this work is uh, making connections, uh, uh, one person, one narrative, one uh, uh, reality shared at a time. And I wanted to thank you for sharing yours. Thank you so much for that, Rob. Yes, I also want to thank you for sharing sharing your narrative with with us. Um, it was it was very interesting, very powerful, and I hope you hope wish you well in going over to London. <laughs> Henry Ann would like to speak. Excuse me. I'm trying. I have my hand up, but it's kind of hard to see here. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, Anne. Thank you. So, thank you, Mia, for your presentation and and being vulnerable with us. Uh, I know that's not always easy for folks. And uh, one of the things that really struck me about what you shared was regarding challenging not only strangers but coworkers, you know, our peers, our family, and. I had a like a little visceral reaction when you said family, and I'm just thinking about my family. Um, and uh, and sometimes I kind of let for me that's the most challenging because they're um, they're uh, well, I'm trying not to say, I'm trying to figure out how to say this nicely. they're they think differently and and they often uh, say some things that that are. Uh, are putting people down or putting them in boxes or lumping groups of people together. And, and it's, um, but I, it, it reminds me that this is a, a full-time job to be an ally and that uh, any, any opportunity uh, that we have to do this is we need to do that, we have to take that opportunity even if, even if it's difficult. So, so thank you very much for reminding us about that. Okay. Well, thank you again, Mia, for your for your words for us, and we will keep them in mind as we go forward. Thank you for your time, everyone. Um, I hope I left you with some sort of feeling or some sort of thoughts. Um, I hope I didn't take too much time out of your day and interrupt your weekly meeting. But thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, next on the agenda is the diversity statement update. Uh, thank you, uh, Henry. Uh, the, we have a work group that's been working through the diversity statement for the last year. Um, we received some updates from a couple of colleagues and then I sent an email to uh, the group uh, with the doodle poll to schedule a meeting for next week, hopefully. Um, and we hope to have final edits done to bring back and then uh, we may be asking for additional time, uh, Chairperson, uh, just so in case 
to, to get it through since we meet every other month um, to get the uh, statement approved. And then we hope to have a draft. Again, our goal is by the end of the year to have a new statement uh, completed so that we can launch the strategic diversity planning process. So thank you to everyone who's been involved. That includes you, Henry, Rachel, uh, Dr. Clark as well. And so, um, and several others who are not here right now. And so we appreciate your efforts and you're on the statement and hopefully we will, I'm crossing my fingers, we'll be done in the next 30 days. So we can have it wrapped up. Okay. Any discussion about that? I'm having slight problems with my with my laptop, which is why I'm pausing. Um, Okay, why don't we have a update on the workforce discussion and reading program update. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Dr. Clark uh, and I had the official handoff and transition of the binder uh, last week. Um, initially, is my, my understanding was that his office, the Office of Human Rights, who was um, hosting the program last year uh, because they were in the anticipation of hiring in this particular role, typically university officer role. Um, and so I have the resources to, to move forward for this year. Um, as a follow-up to our conversation, Henry, you had asked whether or not we would consider partnering with the city. I reached out to their HR director, uh, Shelly Michelle Nunn, and they've agreed to participate um, in the program for this year, which has been great. Um, we have a list of resources from GARE, which we're going to be optimizing the relationship with the Government Alliance for Racial, Racial Equity. They have a reading and discussion curriculum list of items that we're in the process of reviewing for consideration of potential books for the year. Um, and so we, we will meet um, Shelly, um, Ruby and I will meet to discuss the program and then also in reviewing and respect to previous history and then we'll lay out those dates and times and process knowing that if we decide this year to work between both or, uh, organizations, it'll look potentially a little different than it has before in the past. And so we welcome all feedback regarding what the workforce discussion and referral program will look like, but we're trying to um, partner more and try some different things this upcoming year. And so we will have more details about when we will launch the program in the next for the next meeting. So, uh, but as far as the initial inquiry about who is going to do what, when, and then whether or not we could partner, those questions have been answered based upon our last meeting and discussion. Rachel, yeah, I just have a quick question. Um, we mentioned that Gare has a list of potential books and some resources. Did they also, would we be able to use someone from GARE to facilitate? Uh, not at this time, because uh, GARE is going through a massive restructuring at this time. And so they essentially they kind of paused their contracts and they've written it somewhere to do that. But we are looking at contracts. We've had a couple of discussions about this and what this is gonna look like. And I know that Dr. Gonzalez, who worked with us last year, um, is actually a part of the city's workforce diversity committee. And so no decisions have been made, but I know that if we decided to work with Dr. Gonzalez again, there would be some synergy and understanding around the work. Um, and then also if we do pair, we know that between both organizations that Shelly and I would have to have a more robust role and then Ruby bringing in HR as well. Um, she has some ideas about how we can expand the conversation beyond what we currently um, have. In other words, how do we make it more of a continuum ongoing process? And so um, we're looking at all of those things and options and opportunities. Exciting. Thank you. Rachel, I, I appreciate See, every time I was like, can I just <laughs> you make it sound exciting. Thank you, Rachel. Do you also plan on making it a, a larger group since there'll be so many more um, people eligible? Yes, but the, well, our hope is to do so. However, the drawback is creating a safe space and a brave space. And so one of the things that folks find is a challenge for folks to be vulnerable in large groups. And so if we do something where there are more attendees, we still need to be able to break the groups down into smaller sections. And so that's something that we're trying to work through in a COVID environment, knowing that the program will probably be virtual again and what that might look like. Okay. 
So we would like to have more people. That is, that would be our intention, um, but just making sure we're maintaining that sense of order and confidentiality. Has the city ever done anything like this before? Um, not, well, yes and um, yes and no. I mean, I think this program is a little unique to the county in the way it's been done, um, but I think they have had like book reads and things of that nature um, and they jumped right on it. And so I think us doing work with reimagining public safety, us doing the Juneteenth work together, just various things. And so um, having willing partners to help us think outside the box has, is, I think is to all of our benefit. And so thank you, Henry, for your suggestion, because that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only thing uh, that I think of that, on, that it was done on a large scale with two citywide book reads that were done over, over the last decade. One was focused on uh, Dr. King's last book published when he was alive, where did we go from here, Chaos of Community? And I think it was 2010 or 11. And then in 2016, The New Jim Crow by um, Michelle Alexander. But that was, uh, that was a combined effort by a number of entities um, in which the city may have had some part in. I'm not sure to what degree. But those are the, other two, the only other large scale efforts that I've known in terms of book reads in this vicinity. Shannon? I accidentally hit the hand button. <laughs> <laughs> I had the chat open and I went to hit the chat button and everything moved over. So I'll be your entertainment for today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can put your hand down too. <laughs> There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the um, because Cornell used to do a book read. In fact, uh, the town used, the city used to do a combined with the library, we used to do combined book read, but that was years ago. And and I, like we said, that that's probably too much of a too much of something to pull off. So yeah, we can always that was a, that was a huge one. I mean, that was. For initially started out, I guess the year I arrived here as a, a book read for for freshmen at Cornell, and they expanded it to fre a first year in new students, and it, it included the library um, and a number of other entities and a set of, like one huge discussion in um, Bartels Hall, which is about three thousand folks. Um, and then smaller group discussions, but it was discontinued, I think, well, within the last decade or so. Um, and uh, it seems like those kind of massive book reads on, done on that kind of scale are uh, kind of falling out of vogue and higher ed now. Yep. So we'll just keep all as a county and city. <laughs> or town and <laughs> country, the, right? <laughs> just the government employees. <laughs> Well, if you have any ideas that you would like to see implemented, please let me know or please <laughs> contact me. But then also, I know I, I shouldn't say those words. Um, but we also, if you have any ideas for the book or if you have preference around the book, please uh, let us know as well. So thank you for that. We'll have a more robust update. But the initial uh, questions we need to clarify have been answered. Okay. Um, let's move on to the the award ceremonies. <laughs> I'll call on, I'll call on Sharon, <laughs> no, oh, Deanna to call to talk about it. Yes, well, um, this is uh, so. Thank you. <laughs> this is so funny today. Um, this uh, so we are reaching far and wide, right, in our diversity, equity, inclusion work. This is what we're seeing today, right? So, um, Teen Jedi um, has a recognition and appreciation subcommittee. And oh. one of the things that we've been working on um, is uh, giving you guys, giving, providing an update to WDIC around the awards and well, around the recognition and the proclamations you do. Because this came, this was born of, you know, in the, of the last year, there would be questions around what we were going to honor, what we were thinking about, when it was going to happen, what months to, you know, and so we, the county doesn't have an official policy, but we would like to have something in place where we had a routine schedule when we would know what was coming up, what we need to do. So what we asked for is our recognition and appreciation committee to come up with some ideas. One, uh, look at the history and what has been done um, in terms of the work, but then also propose some ideas. 
and then also come up with some awards that we could do that would partner with WDIC, knowing that Henry, some of our convers conversations will be had in a, in a separate forum about what we plan to do moving forward on some of these specific awards. So I will turn it over to uh, Shannon and to Diana, uh, both, are, both of whom are representative of the committee of five who are doing this work. So thank you both Brittany, for your leadership. Brittany too. Oh, oh yes, Brittany. Okay, because <laughs> Shannon, yes, oh my goodness. Shannon is the chair and Brittany is the vice chair. So they've both been rock stars in addition to Diana and some other folks who are on the committee. So again, Team Jedi being an employee led initiative would give them all the credit for the work they're doing. Well, thank you, Deanna. But uh, I think it's a huge effort and a huge undertaking to say the least um, with everything that has to do with Jedi. Um, but we're glad that we can do it. I'm glad that our uh, appreciation and recognition committee has been able to meet through uh, the pandemic because it has not been the easiest situation to try to get uh, people together. Um, especially Diana and myself, who I was reassigned to the health department for a short period of time to help out with COVID effort, but um, we were able to make it happen. And so with that, I will share my screen with you, which I'm so thankful that I put a PowerPoint presentation together because I have to say <laughs> that after seeing Mia's, I was like, okay, I'm glad that I actually made a presentation. <laughs> So um, specifically for our recognition and appreciation subcommittee, um, we came up with, well, let me move to the next here. Um, we wanted to come up with obviously some action and item steps that um, are gonna be able to get us to, to move forward with what it is that we're looking for at this point in time, um, specifically with our subcommittee through JEDI. So, one of the, the very first step that we had talked about was identifying what recognition awards we would like to be able to hand out. Um, we do want to look at not only within county government, but also within community. Uh, we think it's important for the inclusion of the entire community within Tompkins County. Um, but to begin with, that we thought maybe the easiest step would be initially coming up with the um, recognition awards uh, specific to uh, the county government itself. So uh, we looked at choosing some names for awards that would embody what we were trying to accomplish with the recognition, and then also giving each award a description about what that looks like. So um, the three that we decided uh, collectively as a group for the above and beyond award, that award is um, handed out by a uh, supervisor or department head who's recognizing one of their own from their department. Um, added into that, the person that does receive the award would have done something that um, what is or was expected um, of them, which was more um, in a situation or a time when the department truly needed it. The second award that we were looking at was the peer-to-peer -peer award, similar to the uh, above and beyond award. That would be uh, a fellow employee could nominate another person in their department for pitching in when they didn't have to or they were not expected to do so. And obviously that's for the betterment of the uh, department itself. And the third and final one that we came up with was stepping up for a better tomorrow. And that award could be awarded by nomination across departments to someone who went out of their way um, to pave a better way for others or future employees. So this one, I always like to give the example of um, a situation that happened within our own department where we had a white female probation officer going to court with a black male probation officer to court. And at the time that they were going into the courtroom, the security officer had asked the black male probation officer who his attorney was and what he was there for. Um, and in that moment, the white probation officer female had actually said, this is a black male who is a probation officer within our department and, and stood up for in that moment correcting somebody, even though it was um, a situation that was probably extremely uncomfortable uh, for both of them, primarily with um, you know, our, our black male officer who was immediately just identified as a defendant in a courtroom instead of anything other than that. Um, so those were the primary awards that we were looking at for the three um, 
because believe me, I think we had a lengthy list and Brittany and <laughs> Diana might be able to come up and say, I think we had like 10 or 15 different awards that we were coming up with. Um, but these kind of embodied all of what it was that we were looking at. Our second action step was to look at the monthly awareness topics that are, um, that are happening. So that was identifying who and what for the 12 month calendar we would be looking at recognizing um, and identifying any recognitions that already were established with the legislature so that there were no duplications. Um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> is kind of my motto. So what you're seeing on the right-hand side of this uh, slide is the current recognitions that are observed on the national calendar and or the legislature. Uh, anything that has an asterisk next to, next to it is something that is both nationally recognized and that the county legislation has, the legislature has actually um, recognized between 2018 and 2021. So as we look at it, what is identified at this point in time of um, common uh, recognitions is Black History Month in February, Women's History Month in March, uh, Juneteenth in June with the LGBTQ uh, Community Awareness Month, uh, Women's Equity in August, the Latinx Heritage Month in September, Indigenous Peoples Day in October. Um, and other than that, there wasn't really anything that showed any specific recognitions for the other months. So what we did look at as a committee was um, other things that are identified specifically, January Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, Administrative Professionals Day, May being Mental Health Awareness Month and Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month, which we did end up going back through and finding out that that was something that was um, recognized by the legislature. And then uh, July, there really wasn't anything that was identified. So we did put Independence Day and being able to find something around that. Um, and then in December, there really wasn't anything either. And Collectively, as the group, we kind of talked about Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, those types of um, uh, holidays, or using December really primarily as our let's recollect month, <laughs> and then get started back for the month of January and working through that. Uh, our third action step, and as you can see here, I have all of my little Jedi members. <laughs> Um, was to find and appreciate a marginalized groups under holiday months or special um, specific commemorative events. So as a committee, we reviewed those holidays and events, including those that were specific to the to Tompkins County, like I just showed. And we want to eventually end up providing that information to the communication subcommittee of JEDI um, at, least, at least two weeks prior to the start of the following month. That is because we want there to be a smooth and timely roll out for that recognition so it doesn't look like something that's actually just been thrown together. Our last action step um, is to look and communicate for what it is of how it is that we're looking to hand out the awards and how to get information out to the community members. Um, so we did look at some things here and obviously we're, it, this is a fluid document so anything it is that we can get as updated information or um, information that can be provided as actual um, extra steps or resources that we might be able to have for our committee. Um, but we did look at sending out information to department heads for nominations and dispersing information through the JEDI communication subcommittee, as I previously noted. Um, working with Dominic Recchio to post on any county websites, Facebook page, um, any other social media sites that are used and possibly using the workforce ready timesheet. Um, site as well, looking at possibly creating a monthly newsletter, possible radio communication for recognition and announcements, so that way we can get outside resources for other people that are within the community that maybe we don't know as county government at this point, and then possibly looking at publishing um, the rollout of everything uh, in newspaper, Ithaca Voice, The Shopper, um, any other places that we're being able to look to branch out as um, far and wide as we possibly can at this point in time to make sure that we are including people. Um, I did put this um, little graphic on the other side because this does primarily go for what it is that I have for the work that I do at probation. Um, but I do think that when it comes to inclusion diversity, 
um, it, it does hit home for those types of things. And when I was listening to Mia's um, story, it really did resonate with me. And nine times out of 10, the story behind the behavior won't make you angry. It will actually break your heart. So what we still need to identify as a subcommittee, um, community awards. Uh, we have identified that we would like to have two community awards that we can hand out. Uh, both should be in names of two individuals who have embodied all the previous award descriptions. Um, and instead of it being within county government, we are looking for that to be within the community. Should we be identifying as someone that that person should be the person that has paved the way for future progress within the community? And I will kind of give a little bit of shout out here to Deanna because I am not sure that I spelled her name correctly. Um, but um, we had discussed uh, the county legislature chairperson and we had talked about working with WDIC to find a secondary uh, award nominating uh, individual and find the description for what both of those awards would happen to be. And with that being said, I hope that presentation wasn't too long and at least it caught your eye and kept your attention a little bit. Um, and if there's anything that Brittany or Diana would like to add or Deanna would like to add to that presentation, that's just a little bit of what we're doing with the recognition and appreciation subcommittee at this time. Or if there's any questions. Kate had two questions in the chat. Um, Henry, I know it's your meeting, so I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Kate, Kate, do you want to ask your question? Uh, yeah, I was just curious for the peer to peer um, if it was possible to do like cross departmental, because I think a lot of the COVID response, you know, like you said, you had been reassigned to the health department. You know, I've helped with the COVID clinics and, and the vaccination clinics and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it would be really cool if there was a situation, especially with departmental, even within the Jedi team, we've had such collaboration and cross departmental. Um, input for some of this, just something to think about. Um, and that may not be the space for it, but just to be able to be able to give a nod to somebody else in another department that was maybe doing something. Yeah, I think that we could absolutely, like I said before, this is a fluid document and it's always sure. open for um, betterment uh, because that's what this is supposed to be about. Um, so I do think, I think initially when we were looking at peer to peer, it was because generally the peer that you end up seeing doing going the extra mile might be um, within your own department, but we could absolutely make that within your own department and across departments. Thank you. Okay. Rob Brown. Uh, the, the question that I had lined up uh, uh, sort of follows directly on what Kate was bringing up with, uh, you know, with two of the three awards uh, being currently uh, uh, proposed is more intra-departmental and in how they originate. Uh, and sort of broadening throughout the uh, uh, county community uh, uh, as an objective in, in part of my mind. Another uh, question is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, how many awards uh, does the uh, uh, committee uh, contemplate there being over a period of time? What's the interval for, for it being awarded? You know, like uh, uh, if, if uh, uh, we've got two or three awards focused by uh, either a supervisory or a peer employee nominating somebody within a department, for example, do we have one per department? Uh, do we have them as uh, uh, somebody steps up and shines throughout the year, however many? Uh, what sort of a, a logistical framework are we looking at with regard to uh, 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 honoring folks at which intervals and so on? Yes. Yeah, so Deanna and I, we were talking about this actually at the last meeting because believe me, I have all of these things in my head about how great and wonderful everything is going to be and how to be able to hand out all of those. And just, I want to recognize everybody for everything that they're doing. <laughs> so it's about reining me back in and um, starting with this process first and then working our way through um, what does that look like? Uh, is there a number that we're leaving set that if you have received it in the month of January, you're really kind of done for the year um, to provide other things for other people um, and leaving it open for everybody. And then talking about um, having our committee or a variety of people from all the subcommittees being the people to um, look at nominations and then narrow it down to what exactly it is that we're looking to do. So that's really the secondary step for this first step, which was um, putting things together, naming things, describing things, and then working on putting um, information together with committees and 
what exactly those guidelines and protocols are going to look like. And Deanna, you can add to that if you like. Sure. Um, so this is Team Jedi is still less than a year old. And so I'm very proud of the work they've done so far. And so we want to scaffold up knowing that Team Jedi is primarily, it is primarily was designed to be an internally focused uh, uh, group, knowing that we work from the inside out. The reason why we actually wanted to raise awareness to WDIC is because we have the community component that we think is important, but there it's just not fully matured in Team Jedi. And so our hope with the conversation today was to come to Team Jedi and, and I'm sorry, come to WDIC today and say, would you be interested in, in taking the lead or helping us with the community award? And what would that look like? You know, if you want to add an award or two, we would absolutely support that as well. But knowing that, you know, once we do this the first time, is that we want to do it with, um, with the spirit of excellence and then grow our awards process from there. So starting with two to three to begin with in the first year and then knowing, evaluating and seeing how well we do. And also knowing in addition to that, we'll also be working on the recognition process with uh, working with WGIC on creating the calendar for other recognitions, knowing that the awards is just one component of the myriad things that this committee is supposed to do. Okay, Ann Coleman. Thank you, Senator. Uh, and thank you, Shannon, for the presentation and all the work that you and the other folks have, have done on this so far. Uh, one question that I have is, uh, and you mentioned that you had a lot of ideas for awards, and so you so you narrowed it down. Um, was one of those uh, the community, somebody from the community, to be able to nominate? someone, because I'm just thinking of, in, in my head, that would be something I'd want to do sooner rather than later. I'm not saying it has to be done right now, but sooner rather than later, because then that helps engage the community, which I think is always uh, something to think about uh, as far as, I mean, we are a community service, the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yes, um, yes that's it. We have. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is the, that's the third award. And we were, we were hoping, like I was saying before, we're hoping to have that process more that, that, that WDIC would help us bolster that because we know we have community members on WDIC and we don't have any on Team Jedi. So we, we're bringing that, well, first of all, one, is this a process you support? And is something that you think is a good idea? And then from there, if you do are supportive of the community award idea, then yes, we want to build the parameters in collaboration with WDIC. And we're, we would like to get this done this year for sure. Mm -hmm. And if there's yeah, more than one, one award, we absolutely want you to come up with some, come up with the guidelines on that as well. We could be two or three as well. Mm -hmm. Did you, Kate, good. Kate good I see that you said um, consider one for maybe honoring Kirby Edmonds. Can you tell me who Kirby Edmonds is? I, and I am, I say, say this all the time to my group. I do not live in Tompkins County and sometimes my little world of probation is really small. <laughs> um, so I usually tend to see the other side of things. So obviously being a little educated on this would be fantastic. True. Yeah, no, Kirby, Kirby was a, a powerhouse in Tompkins County uh, and worked for the Dorothy Wood Cotton Institute, CCE, um, the Cook, um, Help me, guys. He did. He was. I. You know, I didn't even know half of the things he did until he passed away. I think in late January and read his obituary and really felt like I squandered an opportunity to learn from somebody I probably should have been having many more conversations with. Um, yeah. Dr. Clark. Yeah, Kirby. Kirby um, <clears throat> was um, one of the group of fifteen who helped us reconstitute the Human Rights Commission two years ago. He was vice chair of the commission. He has been a long time, was a long time activist and, and um, co-convener um, of this organization called Training for Change, which focused a lot on um, diversity and inclusion work. Um, he had his, he had irons and so many fires <laughs> um, and often in the attempt to put those fires out <laughs> to, to um, and just was a pretty remarkable person um, who, um, you know, suddenly um, came ill and died last year, around about this time a year ago, um, and a huge loss to our community. You know, another person too I, I, that should be acknowledged too is Audrey Cooper, um, longtime community activist, 
here. She headed up Cornell's Multicultural Resource Center. Uh, really, I think, be, if I'm correct, um, sort of organized it from the beginning and it became part of Cornell Cooperative Extension and was a, very, was a longtime activist leader here from the time she arrived here in the 60s as a teenager up until, you know, most recent days. But really a champion for human rights person of um, Native American and Syrian heritage who uh, was a real champion for diversity and inclusion. Trying to write all the things that you're saying, Dr. Clark. Okay. Uh, I can repeat it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got. I think I got most of it. <laughs> okay, you can, also, you can also send her an email too. That yeah. is true. You have my email. I got your email. You we have minutes it. too. We have, we have minutes, right? As well. <laughs> Somebody's keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, these are great because, like I said, honestly, I am not from the Tompkins County community, so knowing who are, um, you know, those people that embody all the things that we had described about, you know, paving a better path for future employees, future Americans, future Tompkins County community people. Um, those are things that I lack in this area. So I'm always willing to, my motto has always been the more the merrier, give me all the information as much as possible. So that way I can do what I need to do on our side of things to make sure that that happens. So thank you for that information. Um, so what are you, so what are your next steps? Well, I think, well, what, two things that we need from you, because I know Shannon, you're looking at me, right? Yeah, I'm so, like, okay. Guess, okay. So we wanted to share, right? Because, you know, Henry always saying, what are you doing? Right? So what are we doing? <laughs> Wanted to share the information, but then also, do we have support from WDIC on where we are on the words of recognition. So in terms of, there's two things that were listed. One, in terms of the recognitions that were uh, originally shared, um, does that list seem like something we wanna continue and add to in terms of our different holidays, in terms of you know LGBTQ flag month and then Asian, Asian, all those different things. So what we wanna do is calendar all of them. So that when we're doing proclamations or we're putting out educational materials or we're coming up with events that we have them all scheduled in advance. One, so if we think that there's some consensus around that, that would be the first thing. And then the second thing, it sounds though, I think I hear that we are in support of working on a community award. And then from there, if we're in support of working on a community award, we would like a subcommittee of WDIC to help us with that. And so we will take volunteers and thank you, Rob, I see your name in the mm -hmm. uh, chat. So if folks are willing to work with us on that, um, again, I think Shannon's saying she's not being from here and I'm new to the community. I would welcome input on naming and various things. Okay. Um, well, it's open for discussion. What do, what do people think? I think it all sounds wonderful. Absolutely. Um, do you need a, do we need an actual, um, like red not resolution, but like a move that we need to vote on something that we approve so far, or can we just say our yeah, thoughts? We can, yeah, we can just take a, a a survey or whatever and see what people <laughs> see what people think. Um, or, or, or we can discuss it offline and then also get back to them in a couple of days, so we don't put anybody on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would certainly say that I am a, a supportive of dire the direction that uh, the group is going, not just supportive, but appreciative. It sounds like you've been doing a lot of great work doing, putting a lot of thought into it. Uh, uh, and, you know, anytime somebody uh, uh, says something like put it on the calendar in advance, uh, you know, I get little hearts in my eyes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> So I was wondering about the December with a Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. Huh? <laughs> Should be really yeah. on the calendar. They, they, don't, uh, they don't have to be. Here's the thing. They, no. That was a part of it. There's no decision made on these things. And so yep. what, we, what we also know with this process is once we start something, we're going to add to, right? But then if you think that we shouldn't do something, that's absolutely okay. 
Um, we and are if not, we see something that like within this first year, cause it's all a learning process and a learning curve. If we find something that really didn't work, then we look at changing it up for the next year. I mean, the hope is not only are we doing and trying to recognize things on a national level, but we're trying to also do it at the same time on a local level um, within Tompkins County when we when we are doing these things um, for the recognition uh, and the awareness for those months. But I mean, if it, what we're really trying to do is establish like a template of exactly how the first year is really going to be the hard year with getting everything um, together and seeing what does and what doesn't work and, and just making those adjustments as we progress through the time frame. Obviously, like I said, it's a very fluid thing and things are always changing. And um, I mean, you guys know from second to second at this point in time, there's always something that's that's moving and shaking. So um, looking for us to be able to do the same thing is what we're looking to do too. I'm definitely in support of where, where you've been, uh, where you're going uh, and what the work you've done. And just in what was mentioned uh, just recently about the holidays, religious holidays. And um, I, I, at this point, you know, I'd like to try it and see, see what happens, see what the response is, because uh, I know uh, that that, I know, for instance, here, our clerks at the county legislature, they're very aware of the various holidays. And so I think to help other folks, uh, it, because it impacts their work and, and, and uh, uh, scheduling meetings and, and different things. So um, I, I think making other people aware of that I think can only help them realize that, especially since we're working together, all of us are working together, that it, rather than pretending kind of like they're not, we don't have holidays anymore, or, <laughs> you know, but just to think about, oh, you know, this, this is, this is uh, people have different religions and, and people are diverse. So I think it, it, it might uh, lend itself to people being able to discuss it. Not that we don't want people to discuss holidays at all, pretend they're not here, but we want them to be open to it uh, and, uh, and, and just, I mean, that's your, to me, that's more normalizing than taking them off or, or keeping them off. In general, I would agree, but especially coming from a diversity and inclusion group, uh, uh, listing holidays can become tricky when it comes to who do you leave out. You know, for example, the uh, uh, current list doesn't include anything that uh, uh, acknowledges the uh, uh, winter celebrations of uh, uh, witches, pagans, and uh, uh, earth-centered religions, for example, uh, uh, or uh, any indigenous celebrations. And especially when it's an or originating from a diversity group, every well-intentioned, uh, I just didn't know, uh, can seem like a source of hurt from somebody who is hoping for the opportunity finally to be publicly recognized. Yeah, because we don't represent any Jewish holidays, I noticed. Well, I think I had Hanukkah on there. Right. Um, and then I was, about. and then I did look, this, this is my laundry list of all of the <laughs> awarenesses. Um, where is it? There was, doo, 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 doo. I swear I had one on here, which was like, where is it? No, I guess I don't have it on here, but I do have this wonderful, you know, every single day of every single month, <laughs> what was recognized on there. And I do believe that we, um, we do have some other things that are in there too. And also in respect to Jewish tradition, there are, you know, there are major and minor holidays. And so if we yeah. want to um, look at those and add those to, like I said, this is, this is all based upon our initial foundation for what we knew the legislature does do, you know, but then so that it's again, it's uh, becomes a standard and then adding to that. And Rob, you hit the nail on the head. I very much so anticipate someone saying this is not here. And so let's add to and look at these things and how do we, how do we align what we decide to honor with our county values? And that's ultimately to me is the core of why we're doing these things to honor our values. And when I say our, I mean our community as a whole. And so there will be a lot of different things. And also knowing that religious affiliation and beliefs are a dimension of equity. And so I, yeah. uh, I think it's a, a challenge in that I, I agree with uh, 
and sentiment and how we opt ideas in, you know, as opposed mm -hmm. to taking them out and what that looks like and how do we talk about a uh, celebration and honoring mm -hmm. religious beliefs from a holistic perspective mm -hmm. and whether you're Judeo-Christian or not or, or any of those things. What does that look like? And then how do we set up our organization to have those difficult conversations? Because I can guarantee yeah. we're going to get that email next year because something, you know, various things, because that, that's what happens <clears throat> in this work. But we're building yeah. a culture of inclusiveness. So we have, and we have to start somewhere. Yeah. And I think, too, that, I mean, in terms of the religious holidays piece, and I noticed from my years of work at Penn State and Cornell that, I mean, there's, there's a multi-faith calendar, which mm -hmm. in and of itself captures a plethora of, mm -hmm. of um, holidays. I mean, and I'm talking about the whole spectrum from those who are involved in, um, you know, earth-based faiths to, you know, your three major Abrahamic religions to other faith communities. I mean, that in and of itself is an undertaking. Um, but but you're right. I mean, as Diana say, I mean, it's right. I mean, you know, religion is a part of of the um, you know of the reality uh, of diversity and inclusion. And it's you know, it's always the question of how we or the extent to which we can provide accommodation for people. Um, in, in you know who have you know valid practices, I mean, or not have valid practices, but who you know wish to you know observe. And I think that's a that's an issue that you know certainly has to be dealt with at the HR level um, in terms of uh, of that. And you know, often I mean, those types of the statements in terms of addressing accommodation tend to be generic because it's difficult to pinpoint mm -hmm. uh, certain types of things and you can really kind of get in the, uh, <laughs> you can get into a difficult space <laughs> by being too specific. Yeah, I just worry about doing it from a, a county employee, you know, state standpoint of whether we're promoting one religion over the other. Mm -hmm. and no, so I don't, I think, I think that's less of an issue if there is an acknowledgement of as many as you as as you can identify with the capacity to um, to incorporate others. Um, it's really it's listing them is not the same as you know saying this is the established religion. <laughs> I mean that's one of the reasons why. <laughs> The Lord's Prayer is not said in schools. I'm old enough to remember when the Lord's Prayer was done. <laughs> said something about my age, but um, which is good. But <laughs> anyway, but but that was a sectarian prayer, you know. And there's this misconstruence of the, this notion that prayer has been taken out of school. Any child can do a moment of observance according to one's faith conviction, but that's not the same as having everyone say the Lord's Prayer who may not be. Christian. And that's why the Supreme Court made that decision in 1962. So I think we're on safe ground in terms of acknowledging that this is, that religion is part of people's lives. Also, in addition to it being a, to, to add to Dr. Clark's point, there are all of the, a lot of the holidays, you could make the same argument whether or not it's religious or not, or if it's multicultural, people will not identify with it, you know, mm -hmm. or they're not a part of. So I'm just, uh, to me, in terms of equity, if we're using the same criteria to opt people in, that's where I'm seeing the gateway to more inclusiveness and to more, uh, uh, having more religious observance uh, in terms of um, our own education as an organization. So, and also to me, at this, from what I see, we think about, when we talk about Christmas, some folks are Christian, but some folks don't or celebrate Christmas as a, as a religious holiday at all. A lot of folks don't. Right. And so, it's, um, but it still is a national holiday. And so, but what I'm really excited about is that we're having the conversations around these things, um, which I think is really critical to this. I'm just remembering we've had very similar, almost, and it's sometimes word for word, some of the same things that people were saying now uh, when we discussed a couple of years ago about flying uh, various flags for different months. So it's, some of the fears, some of the some of the uh, uh, questions. So, so it's it, it's a process. Yeah. yeah. 
And not for nothing, Dr. Clark, you still look like a young buck. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Wait, and, and by the way, is that our dear colleague, Mr. Lane, back there? Yeah, that looks like it. Well, the reason why I asked, because I'm waiting for the history to come in here. Come on. <laughs> 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 you know, so I just, so I saw him back there. I thought it'd be great to hear from him. And I, I'm sorry if I'm just... If I'm what, what did you say, Deanna, to, to Mike? I said it'd be great because he's always has some historic perspective he provides in the context. And so I would just be great oh, to hear from him. There's our colleague there. Right. He, he said you always speak about historical context. So, well, do you have any opinions on this? I think that uh, recognizing holidays, listing them, I think is a great idea. Uh, I think that uh, we have holidays mostly because we have them in union contracts uh, that we agree to pay people for. But there are other holidays, uh, religious holidays and, uh, and secular holidays that uh, we need to, to notice. Uh, and it wouldn't be the first list of every, every day having some significant uh, event. I think that's a great idea, but uh, Let's not forget that the uh, Catholic Church had a saint for every day of the year uh, for many for many years. Uh, I don't know whether I'm saying what you'd like to, the kinds of things you'd like me to, to say, but uh, I don't get to your meetings very often. I was very interested to hear the comments today. Uh, heard, uh, I was at the Downtown Ithaca Alliance meeting last night, their annual meeting. Uh, at the Marriott, and uh, they had uh, two speakers, they had three speakers. One was uh, uh, from TCAT and, and one was from Ithaca College. Uh, I'm gonna forget their names right now, but Susan, a brand new uh, person in the uh, uh, physician, physician's assistant uh, master's program up there. Excellent speaker. If you haven't heard her speak, you should have her talk to you about the history of bringing forth that whole career starting from the 1960s. And then also uh, Gladys, Gladys, what's Gladys' last name on the, uh, on the, on the Human Rights Commission, she spoke of the, uh, of the local, uh, local leaders of color group. Uh, she gave an excellent speech last night too. Uh, I particularly like that. And, and she was very demonstrative about what people can do to, to further uh, bring uh, business of color into the, uh, the economic sphere of things. So I, uh, I appreciate you should, you should, if you haven't heard them speak, they speak very well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, why don't we, um, why don't we let this do for a little while and then we'll, we'll get back to you in about a week or so with already Rob and some other people seem to be interested in it. So why don't we um, why don't we test the waters and get back to you? How about well, thank that? you for your time. I appreciate you all doing all the hard work that you're doing on the other side of this too. Thanks. And let me ask this question, Henry. When you say test the waters, what does that mean? <laughs> that means we'll, we'll 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 get back to you. We'll uh, okay. we'll we'll, dis we'll discuss it by via committee, and then um, I'll send an email about it, and then we can. We can send you basically what the sense of the committee is. Okay, thank you. And now we're going to talk about WDIC membership with Rachel Graham. Okay, so I will keep this brief. Um, but we realized uh, the committee has 11 to 15 seats. Um, right now we have 11 seats filled. <clears throat> excuse me, with um, two vacancies. One uh, legislator vacancy with a term expiring um, the end of this year, 1231-21, as well as a county staff vacancy with the term expiring 1231-23, um, which leaves, I guess, technically four seats open. Um, so we are talking about... Um, adding some more robust participation. Um, we started working on compiling a list of people that we might want to recruit. 
and open to suggestions. Um, so just asking everyone to think about community members, county employees, um, other legislators that might be interested um, and send them my way. So we are wanting to get some, some new members. Yeah, we'll be getting some new legislators in at the beginning of the year. So we should, I, I assume Ann wants to continue. I assume we can get another legislator that way. And the staff people, um, I'm not sure. We can, we can maybe um, just suggest people to you that we think would be good people to, um, to be on the committee. Um, and I don't know about the community members. Um, I guess, you know, you guys can, we can make suggestions to you about people we know too. Yeah, that'd anybody, be great. Anybody yeah, else uh, have any other thoughts? I was just wondering about somebody from the IAAA. That was what I was gonna, that was one of the things we talked about. We hope so, we would like to. Have representation from them. Yeah, I talked to them initially and they were going to search around for someone, but they didn't find anybody. But you can certainly hit them up again. Um, also, the Latino Association, too. Mm -hmm. um, they'd be also somebody, although they're, very, they're also very busy. But again, you can hit them up and sort of see whether or not they have a person. Um, and you can tell them the meetings can be in Zoom. <laughs> So, so, yeah, those are the two groups that I can think of. Otherwise, you know, maybe someone from Cornell or some of my C too, um, if they have if they have the time to do it. And we may also consider somebody from the with veterans experience, um, as uh, or somebody from an ecumenical background in terms of religious affiliation, um, just for that perspective as well. There's a couple of other, you know, um, without tokenizing folks, you know, we know we have some stated or explicit uh, dimension tech where they're represented in the group, we don't, not all. And so I thought our Asian, Asian American allyship was absolutely paramount as what we're seeing in our culture was key, but then also just looking at some of the other uh, dimensions that are not recommend, and I'm sorry, not represented is what I'm trying to say here. Um, and I think that our, with us having a new veterans office, that's another group that I think the county has put resources into that um, is not often understood as a, a underrepresented uh, population. Okay. So, yeah, Rob has the thing about inviting applications to the diversity consortium. Might be a good way to also get some people. Um, moving on to our last, well, the next item is the ADA compliance. I talked to Arel and I talked to Alan Lockett, who handles ADA compliances with the county. And he showed me a report that basically showed that they're up to date on all the ADA compliance stuff. Um, I did not invite him to this meeting, but I may invite him to the next meeting just to give us a brief overview of that. Um, I didn't think it was really necessary to have him come this soon because again, he says everything up to date except for maybe some special projects that may mm -hmm. pop up, but he doesn't exactly know when they pop up. Um, but you know, but he says it because there was a um, there was a 2017 list of items, and they've satisfied everything. So, so yeah. So, I, Ann Corman. Right. I thought uh, Alan had a list of things, and and maybe I'm I'm incorrect in this, but of other things that we could do. So maybe. It's, the thing would be to do look above and beyond. Um, if, for instance, there's, uh, my understanding is that there's certain requirements if the building is significantly rehabbed or new. So, for instance, you know, uh, opening 
doors that self-open. We don't have those on a lot of our buildings. You know, that you have a push button or some, you know, so if it's, if they're not required on existing buildings, maybe we want to look at, I mean, to me, that's an obvious thing. I mean, I'm just sure there's other things. Did you mean Alan Lockett? Pardon me? Sorry, did you mean Alan Lockett? Yes. He has a list? Yes, I guess. Um, well, why don't we... Um... My, my immediate thought there is that uh, uh, perhaps it could streamline things if we had an opportunity to read that report or some highlights there from offline uh, so that we could be uh, uh, better informed by the time that we might uh, discuss that actually in a uh, meeting time. Okay. I will get him, to, I'll get him to send that to send that list. And maybe, Ann, I can talk to you offline about some things and maybe we can we can work together on on this. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I'd say make sure that you include Larry on that too, because he often asks questions regarding the ADA compliance. Okay. I'll include Larry too. And the last one, I guess, is a uh, is Dr. Park. Do you have any any updates on the Human Rights Office to report? Nothing out of the um, nothing to report at this time. Um, we are not not per se. I mean, I, well, one thing I will uh, I will mention. Um, I am I'm working with uh, Richard Rivera to put together a panel which will be focused on um, the challenges of migrant workers who constitute, of whom a significant number are of Latinx heritage and the challenges they face in terms of, of, of living wages and, and, and who in many cases are also undocumented, uh, which we're planning for late in September. And that coincides too with Latinx History Month. Um, we had initially set a date for September 16th, where we need to uh, change that and we will get info out on when that will occur um, in, um, uh, in September. But uh, other than that, no significant updates. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I was gonna ask, oh, did you, I know we talked about, um, I mentioned last next year is Juneteenth. Have you been able to find any any speakers? I haven't been work, I haven't started to work on that yet. I'm getting uh, fall programming in place right now. Once I get that in place, I can that's I can pick that up. Okay, yeah, because you just want to get an early start in that process. Right. So maybe we can get someone you know of note to come speak here. Okay, does, does anyone have, well, Deanna, do you have any updates on, <laughs> on equity, diversion, and, you know? Oh, do you, oh, no, actually, I had a question. Would you want some more updates? Because I'm happy to give them, you know, so if we're going to. Yeah, if you, if you, if yes. you were to give some brief updates, sure. I, I don't know if brief, but we're really excited that this week we uh, updated, um, we are collaborating, well, I'm collaborating with the, the HR department on orientation. So today, uh, last Monday, we launched a redesign of the equity section for our mm. employees. And so we, um, so in terms of process, how it started was um, I worked with them on some curriculum, design, redesigned that section, and then um, did a training for the orientation staff on what, how HR interfaced with the, the work of equity, first of all. And then we went over the slides um, and then did that work. And then we actually launched it, I said, with the first uh, group the on Monday. Then you want to know what else we're doing. I also did training for um, foundations of equity for cohort one for HR. So just going over the dimensions of equity, helping them understand where equity fits as HR as an organization outside of orientation. And then I'll be doing cohort two on Friday. Because um, you know we're in we're in different sections as an organization. Then we want to talk about what else we're doing because he always laughs and said, what are you doing? Um, so we're excited about doing that revamp with the orientation. And also in terms of reimagining, we are going to extend the posting on the positions. Um, uh, 
trying to make sure they're all set up and for the things we need to do and then working on the budgeting process to make sure all of the different plans that have been approved are in the budget. Um, then in addition to that, we're also gonna be launching the website for reimagining this week. So you'll see something, the legislators will get a, a press release this week launching some of the plans. It won't be all of the plans because we still have to do some more work. You'll see primarily it's the city's recommendation and the healing plan are the main ones we're gonna start with and then start doing some of the other work. Um, in addition, uh, doing some work with some different partners in terms of like some uh, transportation folks on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Then I also met with uh, some other partners uh, today about how some of our social services connect with the reimagining process. So I'll stop there, but just lots of really good things that are happening and also Team Jedi on top of the things that we're talking about. We are planning for our one year anniversary and we meet again this Friday. Um, and so they'll be doing a presentation, we'll be doing two things. One, they'll be doing a town hall for the organization in the next coming months to kind of showcase all the different um, committees because there are five of them. Um, and so you just saw one today and so we'll do a town hall, but then also we're gonna come to the legislature. I'm gonna have them come and speak to you all as well. So lots of good things, lots of exciting things that are happening in the diversity world. Well, actually it's all of our world because there's nowhere that diversity, equity, inclusion doesn't exist. And so I'll stop there, Dr. Clark, because you know I'll give you 30 more things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, Rachel. Just a quick question on, you said that um, they were extending the posting for the positions. Do you know the date that's being extended through? Uh, September 26th. And what was it previously? Uh, August 15th. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So we met and reviewed the redacted applications. Um, and who were, so you get this question, who reviewed them? It was myself, Larry Workman, who's a recruiter, Shelly Michelle Nunn for the city and Ruby. And so I, again, I don't know who the, the candidates are. We just looked at that in relationship to the qualifications and then we were sending notifications to those folks that may or may not have met, but either way they were notified of where we are on the process. Are we allowed to know how many applications have come in? Oh, sure. I get, you know, that's a, yeah. So we had, it's not a, uh, I think, I believe we had seven uh, for the project director, um, but I need to clarify that because a couple of them were in the appeals process and it, they literally have 10 days from the time they submit to the time that I'll know. And then we had between four and six, I don't want to quote you exactly on the data analyst. And so we're going back out. Not that we had some good candidates, but we want a robust pool for the type of work that it is that we're going to be doing. Awesome. Thank you. And, and was this just a local search or was it a national search for those positions? Well, we don't have like, if you're talking about a, a, like a risk recruiting firm. So we did post nationally. We, um, we, went to, we went to all the HBCUs, used those websites. We also went to other law enforcement agencies that work in cult, uh, work, uh, like for example, there's like Black and Law Performance uh, Law Enforcement Officer Society, but also just like a National Law Enforcement Officer Society. So we went to some of those spots as well. Um, and then also we had, we didn't forget our legal profession as you see me say sometimes. And so there are some attorneys out there that may be interested as well. And so just try to blanket the um, campus, the area, in addition to our typical like of Indeed's, you know, um, newspaper, those things that we, ICMA, NACO, places that we normally go. Okay. Well, thank you. Does anybody have any other announcements? Anything they want to say? Any hey. comments? Thank you. Um, so in, in, I'm seeing we're not meeting again until late in October and October 11th is Indigenous Peoples Day. So I'm just wondering if we're, if Dr. Clark or us or anybody is going to do anything to recognize that. Mm. We could do so, I think we could probably do some sort of acknowledgement. I, I, uh, of some sort. Um, are you, um, and are you speaking in addition to like proclamations? Because speaking to what you're asking about, you know, with uh, Latinx Her Heritage Month, I was gonna ask if we have a proclamation or support is needed to, um, to have one for September. Well, I'm also gonna ask the Latinx, the Latin people, Latina people, whether they want to do one for, because theirs is in mid-September to mid-October. So I was going to get them to do it for a proclamation for the first September meeting, okay. which, is, which is September 7th. Mm -hmm. 
I think Leslie has done the done the Native American proclamation in the past. Um, so we may want to ask her, or Dr. Clark can can also maybe process it. Well, I'm not yeah, sure. I will yeah. check with uh, Leslin. Okay. Because okay. I seem to remember that a proclamation has been done in the past. Um, and I think it may have been generated from her or someone in the legislature. I think I did it uh, last time. And there is okay. a, a, a contact, a local uh, Cayuga chief that we've had to come. So, uh, I don't know if we wanted to do that or if there's anything else I know. Um, well, I, I'm actually not sure about this. If, if anything was, you know, sent out to employees too at the county, because you know we're uh, with the county recognizing this. I think sometimes it's you know part of this education, and it's not just having a proclamation here, but also some somehow letting employees know a little bit why the community, why we're doing this and, and giving them some education. So I'm just wondering what other people thought. Oh, I am yeah. very supportive. Mm -hmm. yeah, I did talk it, to it, Donna. As a, as a matter of process, the uh, uh, Indigenous Peoples Day proclamation has come through WDIC and uh, uh, commonly been spearheaded by Leslin. Uh, but, you know, uh, a lot of our previous work on that, including our uh, uh, discussion over the this, that's, or what's, is certainly within our minutes. Yeah. Well, why don't we have Dr. Clark talk to Leslin and sort of see what they can they can do together. And if not, well, maybe we can talk to you too, and you guys three can get together and discuss it. Okay. I like the idea of um, something going out to the workforce about that too. And yeah. I think that's, I think that would be great. Yeah, I know that in the past, the um, the Latinx group has also had a full month of activities. Right. And so I assume that we'll be getting that too. And so maybe we can share that, you know, from, from this committee or from Deanna's office or from both of our offices to basically raise the issue of, okay, you know, we're, we're giving a proclamation to these people for Latinx month, but also here's a, new, here's a month of activities. Mm -hmm. I did talk to Dominic after our last um, meeting, and he said that yes, they are doing an opt-out series of um, of emails, but that's going to be in the future. But he's working now on doing permission emailing and everything else, and so maybe we can, in fact, get. And I didn't get a chance to talk to you, Dr. Clark, about your email list. Of who do you have on your email list? And maybe send them around to the county employees um, about about the activities that are going on for Latinx Month, um, because yeah, it does make it you know since they, since they I know they have a full robust calendar of things, and so it's just not okay. It's Black History Month. They have a Latinx Month with a whole host of activities that they have. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Um, anything else? Deanna? I have one last thing. And so, but after we get a better sense with the, uh, what you want to do with the recognition of how we want to move ahead with the holidays, that'll help us queue up some, we'll create a document for everybody for the next two years to get um, hopefully things uh, started way in advance. Uh, just another, you're talking about doing stuff with the community. I've been working with um, some folks at Cornell um, doing uh, we're going to potentially be doing another project through CJTI, but then also, more importantly, they would like to do a diversity internship, and so we're working on some uh, ideas around that. And then I'll be a fellow there at Floor Rose House in the fall, um, helping to hopefully recruit people to be a part of, you know, Tompkins County. So and getting free dinner, getting free dinner all too. All day. No, but they ask me, <laughs> what am I doing? But then also, I'll be doing some fireside chats and stuff like that around the work that we're doing at Tompkins County. Yeah, you'll be getting, you'll be getting free dinner. <laughs> yes. Um, come on, Mr. Lane, I need a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, they know Cardo came the other when they came on Tuesday. They mentioned that the um, Tony Morrison dining hall is amazing, and my wife, my wife has seen it. He said it is impressive, mm. but they also announced that they, they, you know, we should come by and visit. So I'm going to mm. pull for the legislature to go and to go in February <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the Tony Morrison, the Tony Morrison dining hall for for a nice free meal. <laughs> I'm willing to go. I'm willing to go at meal time. Mike, are <laughs> yes. you in? I'm always open for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can have a legislative get together with them. <laughs> but okay, well, I assume that's it. Um, we are just about out of time. Oh, we are out of time. Well, thank you for your time, and um, see you in two months. <laughs> All right. We'll get back to our emails. Okay.